Thanks for tuning in. My name's Tanishka and I'm a teacher of Women's Mysteries, which basically means the information you should have got when you started your first menstruation. Now, before you tune out again, menstruation's been taboo in the West in our modern culture because basically where there's fear, there's power. And it's intrinsic that um, as women, we celebrate our womanhood when we begin cycling with the moon. Um, if we are to really step into our power um, as women and to heal the feminine consciousness on this planet. My personal sense is that if you choose to be born into a female form, you're putting your hand up to heal the feminine, first within yourself for your genetic line, but also to balance the yin and the yang, the feminine and the masculine um, in the macrocosm within our, our culture. So it is a very powerful uh, reclamation to become aware of the lunar cycle and every indigenous culture um, when you came of age and started cycling with the moon with your first period you would be welcomed to what was called the red tent or the moon lodge depending on you know where you were from and this was a great honor it was something that girls would look forward to with a sense of mystique because you know what happened in the red tent the secret women's business was never actually discussed outside of it um, and that was for many reasons namely so that the women knew this was a safe place where they could share anything and everything knowing that it wouldn't be talked about you know as gossip um, in in the village um, for girls this is where they learn how to embrace their womanhood and what happens when we go through our teens is we go through an individuation process from our mums. And that looks something like, oh my God, mum, you are so embarrassing. You're not really going to wear that in public. You are so yesterday. You so don't know what's going on, yada, yada. And that is a natural part of becoming a woman. That first you go, well, if I'm to find my own feminine identity, I will start by going, I'm not you. And Without support, mums can find that a very difficult, um, you know, letting go process. And so the red tent is there um, for many reasons, and one of them is to support women through their rites of passage, which are just the major transitions or milestones that we journey through in our lives, such as puberty, which traditionally is called monarch. Um, and would be honoured with a welcoming ceremony for the girls to the red tent for the first time. And that would consist of, you know, their mums, their aunts, their grandmothers, their, their friends, their older cousins and sisters, all honouring them um, and, you know, really affirming what they see in them as their gifts and qualities and their potential because the maiden phase is very much about your potential and celebrating that you could do anything that your heart truly, you know, wants to do and be of service to the global community or, you know, the village. Um, and as well as that, offering the young girls support so that as they go through that natural individuation process of moving away from the mother as, you know, their main mentor, that they have other women they can go to. So, for instance, if in their teens or twenties when they go through the shadow lands and they don't have a lot of experiential wisdom to draw upon but in order to get wise they must go through many difficult lessons in the underworld and that can take the form of you know not honoring themselves in the type of partners they choose or totally annihilating their their physical temples with drugs it might be the underworld of crime um, there are many ways that we need to eat the pomegranate seeds, the, um, the, the bitter but necessary lessons in life. And that's what um, our teens and our twenties are about. You know, in the Kuri tradition, in the indigenous Aboriginal tradition, when you turn 30, they celebrate that milestone with a one-eye ceremony. And in this ceremony, it's acknowledged that whatever mistakes were made um, you know in the teens and 20s and never ever discussed again because it's a necessary part in the getting of wisdom 
So, um, the monarch ceremony honours um, that this woman, this young girl, now has a circle of support that if she's outside a nightclub and she's taken an E and she can't get home, she can look at her mobile phone and ring any one of the women from her red tent circle if she can't call her mum. And that way she's always got a buffer around her. Or it might be her first STD, you know, or it might be her first big heartbreak, you know, or perhaps she misses out on the uni course that she had her entire life staked upon. Whatever it is, if she has anything she needs an, an older, wiser opinion on, it means it's not the blind leading the blind, just her peers or, you know, um, Dolly Doctor, which in Australia is a glossy magazine for young teenage girls, and it pretty much mentored um, us in our high school years back in the 80s um, in terms of all the questions we didn't dare, you know, ask our mums about because we felt too inhibited or embarrassed. So um, the monarch ceremony um, also just by affirming that you, and acknowledging what is happening in the body, um, it says that becoming a woman is worth celebrating. Whereas if we do not acknowledge it, if we simply shove someone a pair of, you know, a packet of pads or, or tampons, we're actually saying that becoming a woman really is a drag and you know this is kind of like a life sentence of cramps and bleeding and it really isn't worth something celebrating and if we only understand it from a physical point of view that can be understandable but our moon time as it was traditionally known when we are cycling with the moon is the most mystical magical time um, and as women uh, in traditional cultures, that would be honoured as a deep inward shamanic descent. And what I mean by that is, when we attune ourselves to the lunar mysteries, to the lunar cycle, we understand that in the two weeks after we finish our, our bleeding time, our moon time, up to um, ovulation, that's when we're in our maiden phase. It's when we feel, you know, like we want to be out in the world, taking on new responsibilities, um, new risks perhaps in terms of putting our gifts out in the world. So it's a good time for organising, um, you know, important career um, steps forward. It's also a time when um, the other maiden archetypes like Aphrodite, um, you know, really wants to go out and have girls' time and get some pampering, and particularly for women that have crossed that threshold into motherhood, um, to do something that honours their inner maiden once a month will mean that their cup is full to keep giving to their family the rest of the month if they get a girls' night in that first two weeks leading up to ovulation, which for many women um, is around full moon.